In this series, I am creating tutorials based on modern compressible flows by John Anderson and compressible fluid flows by Patrick Ustuizen. Also, I am solving the unsolved problems in the book by Patrick Ustuizen and creating computer programs and libraries to solve the same. The topics covered today are why are compressible flows important? What does compressibility mean and how is it defined? What is an ideal guess and perfect guess? So let's begin with the importance of compressible flows in various fields of engineering. Long time ago in 1890s, the importance of this science was realized when the phenomenon of choking was observed in steam turbines, where the engineers at the time were struggling to increase the flow rate to increase the speed of the turbine. It was not until de Laval used the divergent part of the nozzle to achieve supersonic flows, which would be very counterintuitive if you do not consider the compressibility effects. And he was able to achieve turbine speeds of up to 40,000 rpm. Zoom forward to 1947. This year, for the first time, an experimental aircraft piloted by Chuck Yeager flew at supersonic speeds. Before this, it was considered impossible to break the sound barrier. The compressibility effects of air considered in the design of aircraft, body and engine allowed us to cross the speed of sound. There are many more applications where the effects of compressibility of fluids become important, spanning various fields of engineering and science. Some of the applications include internal flows through rockets and gas turbines, external flows over aircrafts and high-speed cars, re-entry of vehicles into Earth's atmosphere and entry into atmospheres of other planets, flows at intake and exhaust ports and manifolds of internal combustion engines, shock tubes and their applications, wind tunnel design and many many more. A totally mind-boggling and interesting application of compressible flows is in the field of computational fluid dynamics. We always feel that CFD is used for solving fluid flows, but the modern CFD is based on so-called Riemann solvers, where concepts from compressible flows are borrowed. Also, road traffic problems can be numerically solved using concepts of shocks and expansion waves like the ones occurring in compressible flows. Interesting, isn't it? So what is compressibility after all? When I hear the word compressible or compressibility, what comes to my mind is a cylinder and piston arrangement and the piston being pushed down by an external force hence reducing the volume of the gas inside the cylinder. The gas hence gets well compressed under the increase of pressure. Let us denote the compressibility of a fluid by the Greek letter tau. Then we can write the compressibility of a fluid as tau is equal to fractional change in volume divided by the change in pressure. An increase in pressure will result in decrease in volume and hence the negative sign. We can rewrite this as minus 1 over v times the change in volume by the change in pressure. Let us slightly modify this equation to write in terms of specific volume. Specific volume is defined as the volume per unit mass. So let's divide the numerator and denominator by mass m. This gives us a similar looking equation in terms of specific volume. We can also write specific volume as 1 divided by density. 
because density is defined as mass per unit volume. Taking a derivative with respect to pressure gives us dV by dP is equal to minus 1 by rho square times d rho by dP. Substituting this in the above equation gives us another definition of compressibility as tau is equal to 1 over rho times d rho by dP. Notice the absence of negative sign in this equation, which means that an increase in pressure will result in increase in density. The two different definitions of compressibility are isothermal compressibility and isentropic compressibility. The compressibility of the fluid when the compression process takes place with constant temperature is known as isothermal compressibility and is written with subscript T. It is therefore mathematically written as tau with subscript T is equal to 1 over rho d rho by dp with subscript T. This process occurs when heat is allowed to flow through the walls of the cylinder and piston such that the temperature remains constant inside the cylinder. The compressibility of fluid when the compression process takes place with constant entropy is known as isentropic compressibility and is written with subscript S. It is therefore mathematically written as tau with subscript S is equal to 1 over rho d rho by dp with subscript S. This process occurs when the walls of the cylinder and the piston are completely insulated and no heat leaves or enters the cylinder. Also there are no frictional losses during the motion of the piston. Therefore the temperature inside the cylinder will change during the process. This means that the same fluid will compress differently when the temperature is maintained constant and when the temperature is allowed to change. In other words, the compressibility of the fluid is a function of underlying thermodynamics process. In our future tutorials, I'm going to use the terms ideal gas and perfect gas a lot and sometimes interchangeably. So let us understand these words little better. An ideal gas is the one which follows the equation of state PV is equal to MRT where P is the pressure. V is the volume of the fluid like the volume inside the cylinder. M is the mass of the gas like the mass of the gas inside the cylinder. T is the temperature. R is the gas constant which is equal to 287 joules per kg Kelvin for air. For an arbitrary gas, the gas constant R can be calculated as R is equal to RU divided by M hat where Ru is the universal gas constant and is equal to 8314 joules per kilo mole kelvin and m hat is the molecular mass of the gas in moles per gram. The above equation can be applied to a large region of gas with constant temperature but if we want to calculate quantities at any given point in the gas, we can divide the above equation by the volume V to obtain the equation P is equal to rho RT, where rho is the density given by M by V. This equation is called the equation of state as it relates the density, pressure and temperature which are also known as state variables. This is an important equation and we will use this equation for solving many of the problems. If the intermolecular forces in the gas are neglected, then the gas is called perfect gas. A calorically perfect gas or just perfect gas in short is an ideal gas with its specific heats constant throughout the thermodynamic process. This assumption greatly simplifies the analysis and is valid for most of the practical applications. Air and many other gases can be assumed to be perfect gas in most of the applications. This assumption however breaks down in extreme situations. I will discuss the real gas effects towards the end of this series. Let us conclude this tutorial by solving a simple problem. 
let's call it problem 1 calculate the isothermal compressibility of air at 1 atm pressure first let us convert the pressure to si units that is 1 atm is equal to 101325 newton per meter square the isothermal compressibility is given by tau is equal to 1 over rho d rho by dp at constant temperature using the equation of state the density can be calculated as rho is equal to p divided by rt and therefore d rho by dp can be calculated assuming the temperature to be constant as 1 over rt substituting the above equation we get tau is equal to rt divided by p times 1 over rt we can cancel out rt and we will be left with tau is equal to 1 over p at a pressure of one atmosphere the isothermal compressibility can therefore be calculated as tau is equal to 1 over 101325 which is approximately equal to 1 into 10 raised to minus 5 meter square per newton well that's our answer if you look up the value of compressibility of water then you will find out that it is approximately 5 into 10 raised to minus 10 meter square per newton therefore air is almost five orders of magnitude more compressible than water and so in most of the problems involving water or liquids in general the calculations are performed as if they are incompressible i will pause this video tutorial here in the next video we will learn about the important thermodynamics relations and how they relate to compressibility thanks for watching and i'll see you next time bye bye